There's a new race to the moon happening right now, and it's not just about bragging rights. The United States and China are both making aggressive moves to establish a permanent presence on the lunar surface, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Whoever wins this race will have a massive advantage in the 21st century, both in terms of scientific research and potential resource extraction, or even military advantage. On the American side, we have NASA's Artemis program. This is a massive international effort led by the United States, with partners like Canada, Japan, and Europe all signing on to the Artemis Accords. The goal is to land the first woman and first person of color on the moon by 2026, and to establish a sustainable presence there by 2028. But while NASA is talking a big game, China is already making moves through their own program, the Chang'e Project. In January 2019, they made history by landing the first ever robotic mission on the far side of the moon with Chang'e 4. This was a huge accomplishment that no other country had achieved before, and it sent a clear message to the world that China was serious about their lunar ambitions. Since then, China has only accelerated their efforts. In December 2020, they launched Chang'e 5, which successfully collected lunar samples and brought them back to Earth. This marked the first time that any country had retrieved samples from the moon since the 1970s, and it was a major milestone for China's space program. And just this past May 3rd, China launched the Chang'e 6 sample return mission to the far side of the moon. Things are going well for the country in terms of their prowess in space, and it just seems like steady growth. China has already announced plans for two more missions in the coming years. Chang'e 7 and Chang'e 8. These missions will involve a range of ambitious goals, from returning samples to the moon's South Pole Aitken Basin, to testing out 3D printing technology using lunar regolith. And here's the kicker. China isn't just planning on sending robots to the moon. They've also announced their intention to land Taikonauts on the lunar surface by 2029, as part of their broader goal to establish a permanent research station, known as the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, on the moon in the 2030s. Meanwhile, NASA is still struggling to get its Artemis program off the ground. Don't get me wrong, the successful launch of Artemis 1 in November 2022 was a huge achievement, and it showed that the United States is still a major player in the space race. But there have also been plenty of setbacks and delays along the way. For example, NASA originally planned to launch Artemis 1 in 2021, but the mission was repeatedly pushed back due to technical issues and budget constraints. And while NASA was officially targeting a 2024 launch for Artemis 2 and a 2025 lunar landing for Artemis 3, they have pushed back the dates to a September 2025 launch for Artemis 2 and a September 2026 launch for Artemis 3. And even then, there's still a lot of doubt about whether they'll be able to achieve those dates. Part of the problem is that NASA is relying on new and untested technologies for critical components of the Artemis program. The Space Launch System rocket has been plagued by delays and cost overruns, thanks to problems with its engines and boosters. The Orion spacecraft has had its own issues with weight and budget, not to mention a faulty heat shield. And then there's a controversy over the human landing system contract. SpaceX won the bid, but Blue Origin and Dianetics are crying foul, saying the selection process was unfair and the Starship design is too risky. Though. I do have to admit that SpaceX has done a decent job at improving Starship with every test flight. In contrast, China is taking a more pragmatic approach to their lunar exploration program. Rather than trying to develop everything from scratch, they're leveraging existing technologies and focusing on steady, incremental progress. And so far, it seems to be paying off. But beyond just the technological differences, there's also a fundamental philosophical divide between the American and Chinese approaches to space exploration. NASA's Artemis program is framed as a collaborative international effort, with a heavy emphasis on diversity, inclusion, and scientific research for the benefit of all humankind. China's lunar ambitions, on the other hand, are inextricably linked to the geopolitical goals of the Chinese Communist Party. For China, establishing a presence on the moon isn't just about scientific achievement, it's about demonstrating technological and economic supremacy on the global stage. This was made clear in 2021 when China and Russia jointly announced their plans to the International Lunar Research Station on the moon. 
This was seen by many observers as a direct challenge to NASA's Artemis program, and a sign that the lunar space race was heating up. Since then, Russia's involvement in the ILRS has faded amid the fallout from the war in Ukraine and the failed Luna 25 mission in August 2023, though they recently announced they will jointly build a nuclear power plant on the moon. But China has wasted no time in recruiting the new partners to their lunar colonization plans, including countries like Pakistan, the UAE, and a host of other nations in the Asia-Pacific region. This points to a broader trend in the 21st century space race, the emergence of new players and shifting alliances on the global stage. While the United States and Russia dominated the space race in the 20th century, the field is now much more crowded and competitive. Countries like India, Israel, and the UAE have all made significant strides in their own space programs in recent years, and private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are appending traditional models of space exploration. The geopolitical landscape of space is shifting, and the old rules no longer apply. So, who's going to win the race to the moon? It's hard to say for sure, but right now China seems to have the advantage. They've got a clear plan, a track record of success, and a growing network of international partners. Meanwhile, NASA is still struggling to get its footing and fend off budget cuts and political interference. But let's be real. This isn't just about planting a flag on the lunar surface and calling it a day. Whoever establishes a permanent presence on the moon will have a major strategic advantage in the decades to come. The moon is rich in resources like water ice and rare earth metals, which could be used to support long-term human habitation and enable new technologies back on Earth. More than that, a presence on the moon could serve as a jumping-off point for even more ambitious space exploration efforts like crewed missions to Mars and beyond. The country that controls the moon will be in a prime position to shape the future of humanity in space. So while it may be tempting to dismiss the lunar space race as a pointless pissing contest, the reality is the stakes are incredibly high. The choices we make now about how we explore and utilize the moon will have consequences that echo for generations to come. Due to my appreciation for NASA and what they have achieved before, it pains me to admit that China might actually be better positioned to win this race than NASA is. But that doesn't mean NASA should just give up and cede the high ground to their geopolitical rivals. If anything, the challenge posed by China should light a fire under them and spur them to redouble their efforts to lead in space. The US needs to get serious about funding and supporting NASA's Artemis program, and they need to start thinking strategically about how they can work with their allies and private sector partners to establish a sustainable presence on the moon. This isn't just about national pride or scientific curiosity. It's about securing their place in the future of humanity. The race to the moon is on, and no one can afford to lose. Whether you're American, Chinese, or anything else, the future of space exploration depends on what we do in the coming years and decades. Let's make it count. Stay tuned for more updates on this new space race and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos on all things space exploration and astronomy. The stakes have never been higher, and the future of humanity hangs in the balance. This is the Space Technician signing off for now, and I'll see you Space Cowboys in the next one.